Is he mad with me, season? Is he mad with me, season? Is he mad with me, season? Today we're going to be learning all about benchmark fractions and percents. And by the end of this video, you're going to be able to look at a fraction, use a model like a double number line or a strip diagram to find the percent that's equal to it. Okay, so for our first problem, let's find 30% of 70. So one of my favorite ways to, to go about this is to create a double number line. So let me show you what that looks like. So we're going to think about our percents as going by tens. To me, that's one of the easiest ways to think through this. So there's 10% of a number, 20%, 30%, 40. Let's go all the way up to 100%. Okay, then on the other number line, we're gonna think about the 70. So 100% of 70 is of course the full 70, right? So we're gonna put 70 right above 100%. Now we've gotta think about how on my percent number line, I broke it up into 10 chunks, right? So how can I break up 70 into 10 parts? Okay, so that's just a division problem of 70 divided by 10, right? So what is 70 divided by 10? Okay, you got it, it's seven. So if I count by sevens 10 times, I'm gonna hit 70, right? So then I'll be able to match these percentages with an amount. So let's start with counting by seven. So seven, 14, 21, you're getting it 28, 35. Keep going until you get to 70. Okay, then you got 42, 49, 56, 63, and 70. Okay, now I love this double number line because every amount is connected to or related to a percent. So now all it takes is looking for it. So what is 30% of 70? What matches up with 30%? Okay, awesome, it's 21, great job. Okay, so now I think we're ready to move over to the whiteboard to do more examples. All right, so now I'd like to take a look at some benchmark fractions and what they equal as percents. So I have a picture of one fourth here. And one thing you can think about is a strip diagram kind of reminds me of a double number line because I can think about 0% being down here, 100% being right here. And then up here I can think of four and zero. And so now I'm just thinking about, well, I'm breaking up 100% into the four pieces. So what is 100 divided by four? Okay, so 25%, and then here would be 50%, 75%, reminds me of quarters, if I'm counting money. So that means that one fourth equals, you got it, 25%. Three fourths equals what percent? Yeah, 75%. Okay, here's another benchmark fraction. And when I say benchmark fraction, I just mean a fraction that is a very common one that is easy to work with mentally, like one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths, things like that that are easy to work with. So one-half is a really good one to know the percentage that it equals. So in this one, once again, we can think about, well, the whole thing would be 100%, and we're really just cutting it up into two pieces 
So what would be the percentage of one half? You got it, 50. So that equals 50%. And you'll hear that a lot in, you know, real life shopping situations usually when someone says, oh, this is 50% off or half off. It means the same thing. All right, another good fraction to know or to memorize is one tenth. So if you think of something being broken up into 10 pieces, what do you think the percentage of that would be? Yeah, 10%. And you can also think about it like this. So one tenth can be written as a decimal like this, right? But I could also call it 10 hundredths. See that one didn't move place values. It's still in the tenths place, right? So I can go like this, 10 hundredths. And then that really uh, is obvious that it's 10% because it would be like 10 out of 100. All right, now I'm gonna do another double number line example. And this time we're trying to find 55% of 300. And so as you can see, I went ahead and broke up the bottom number line into the 10 parts. That way we'll be able to take a look at what matches those, you know, 80%, 40%. And then the top number line, I'm going to say this is zero down here. And the you know, complete 100% of that would be three, all 300. Okay, and now we just have to ask ourselves, if we're trying to break this up into 10 pieces, what would that be? What would we be counting by? Okay, so first you've gotta be thinking, okay, well, I've gotta do 300 divided by 10, so I can break it up into the 10 chunks here. So what is 300 divided by 10? Oh, okay, so some of us might be setting up the algorithm, and then some of us might remember something that's really helpful, um, especially when you're doing things like, you know, dividing by such a friendly number like 10, and we use this in the metric system a lot, we can just move a decimal point. So if you're dividing by 10, you're gonna get a smaller number and you're just moving your decimal point once because there's one zero, so you're moving this way once. And so it's just 30. Okay, so then that means we could count by 30s and get to 300. And if you ever make a mistake on this first, you know, thinking through it, then you'll notice that it's not gonna get you to 300. And so you have to kind of go back and rethink what the division answer is. But let's try this one, see if it works. So 30, 60, 90. Why don't you pause the video and continue that counting and then we'll come back and check your work. All right, so we got it. If you do 270 plus 30, you get to 300, so we know we're correct. And now we can start thinking about 55%. So I wanted to give you one that wasn't exactly one of the numbers counting by tens, because I want us to challenge ourselves a little bit to figure this out. So what do you know about 50% of 300? Okay, so it is 150. Okay, so I'm going to jot that down, 150. And then 5% is just half of t the 10% jumps, right? So it's just half of that. And how much is the jump from 150 to 180? How much were our jumps? 
Okay, they were 30, right? So now we need to know what is half of that 30 jump. Okay, yeah, 15. So we've got the 50% and we've got the 5% or half, which is 15. So what am I going to do with these two numbers? Yeah, I need to add them together to get the 55%. So why don't you add those up real quick. All right, and we got 165. So 55% of 300 equals 165. Which makes sense because if you think back to what we did, you know, half of 300 or 50% of 300 is 150. So we know it's going to be a little bit more than 150. Great job. I hope this video helps you in your math class or at home. See you next time.